so let's move to a slightly or a second order variant of it when i say second order that means just like we made made use of momentum in in the context of centralized gradient descent and developed heavy ball method or the nestor rose method that had faster convergence rate than the simple gradient descent or vanilla gradient descent we can design something very similar here as well and we are going to design sort of discuss something called uh, distributed accelerated or distributed aggregated gradient descent rather it's a second order algorithm and the idea is for, i mean so the agents are going to initialize themselves to some xi0 right in the beginning because agents they don't know uh, what other agents are initializing to right so everyone would have their own initial uh, so this is the initialization step so you have xi zeros and we define something called yi zero which are nothing but gradient of fi evaluated at xi zero so we are going to so agents are going to be initializing two variables now because they are going to be exchanging two variables as we had seen in the context of momentum based methods we had exchange of not exchange but we we were working with two variables at a time right so in this case if you want to use momentum you had you also have to use the great previous gradient information right and therefore the you need to work with x both xi and yi and yi is like a proxy for a uh, uh, momentum term okay so the way this algorithm works it after any iteration at the end of k iterations so you are going to be defining xi k plus 1 so you have the same similar kind of mixing step but a slightly different variant of it j1 through n wij xjk so this this would have been for a simple first order algorithm but now that we are working with second order algorithm we also have some step size alpha times yik okay and think of yik in the beginning and think of yik as the gradient right so and then you you also need to update your yik as so you run another consensus on y is so w i j y j k then you have a gradient f i evaluated at x i k plus 1 minus gradient f i evaluated at x i k so this, this is the algorithm is the algorithm clear so we are looking at the we are using the previous gradient information as well as the current gradient information and that is where that basically is your momentum term right so you are trying to use that momentum term and then you want to ensure that uh, you want to get this updated momentum term and in your uh, when you perform a consensus and gradient step essentially you up, i mean essentially this is your step right where you combine both the mixing as well as the gradient step so is this algorithm clear so let's look at the so i've coded this up so let's look at the implementation of the two algorithms uh, and for the same example so let me uh, rewrite sort of redraw the example that so we are going to be looking at the similar setting okay um, and then you have fi is to be of x minus i whole square so gradient of fi of x that should be x minus i and x star so if if you are trying to minimize i 1 through n fi right so x star turns out to be what is x star in this case n is equal to 5 right there five agents x star is 3 okay so let's try and see if we can make these algorithms to work all right so 
So the first part is just importing the basic library. So NumPy and just for plotting the matplotlib is what we are going to use. Now we are trying to minimize uh, some of these convex functions of x i. Yeah, by the way, there is the DGD and the, I mean, it, it's needless to say that these are, I mean, objective functions are supposed to be convex, right? I mean, we have been working with convex optimization all through. At best, you can work with the function that satisfy peer inequality, but uh, not for a general uh, non-convex function. So this part is fine. So let's define the graph. So if I look at the, if I uh, look at the, uh, the weighting matrix, what should it look like? Uh, if I consider the weighting matrix, so it should be Wij is essentially 1 over 1 plus max of Di and Dj, right? So I have defined, so number of iterations is the number of iterations that both the algorithms are going to be run for. Eta is a learning rate, eta k. We, we are going to keep it both fixed as well as 1 over k kind of learning rate is what we are going to see. The other thing that we are going to be uh, de uh, dealing with is, uh, so essentially the graph connectivity or the network connectivity, right? So in this case, uh, E essentially is uh, basically your edge set. So it's going to get, get a value of 1 if, the, if there is an edge, otherwise it's going to be 0, right? So in our example, uh, so 1 is connected to 2, so that's why you have an edge between 1 and 2 and vice versa, it's an undirected graph. 2 is connected to 3 and 1 and 4, so you can see 1 has basically connectivity with 0, 1, 0, 2 and 3 and so on. I mean indexing starts with 0 in, in Python, right? Then I get the degree matrix because in computing WIJ I need to make use of the degree information. So degree matrix is nothing but the sum of row sum or the column sum, however you want to see for the edge matrix. So W is, is basically EIJ over this, this is the formula that we had seen, right? And the, likewise you can define WI, right? So let's define this graph. And if I look, if I just print this particular graph uh, or the graph connectivity, this is what it looks like. So for agent 1, which is connected to agent 2, so essentially you have 0.75 as the self weight and 0.25 as the weight of 1 and 2, right? And one thing to note this, note here is this particular uh, matrix is W stochastic, right? This, this matrix is W stochastic, so that part is clear uh, and that is one of the properties that we wanted for consensus to work. Now the first order DGD algorithm, so we initialize the agents to random values. So you can see that np.random.rand n in five and it's going to generate five random values using a standard normal distribution. And then I'm going to be recording all the values of like values of uh, individual agents after each iteration, okay? So in the first, I mean, this is the initial value, xval, I mean, that, so basically it's number of iterations times number of agents. So for the first iteration, it's simply the x naught. And then I'm running the algorithm, which is every agent, I mean, I can basically say that w times x is what they are running, right? And once you get this xi k plus half, you essentially compute, you perform the gradient descent step, which is z minus step size times. So z naught is a vector of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you can see z naught is essentially 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we know that the gradients are essentially x minus i. So that's why I'm using z minus, so this i is essentially the z naught vector for every agent. So this is what we are doing here. And then we are just record updating the new, uh, we are just basically saving the new value, right? So let's run this algorithm and let's plot this. So you can see the agents in the beginning, they started a different value, right? Every agent has its own starting value. Some are negative 2 point, some 2.5 or one of them is 1.2. But eventually all of them, they start converging towards 3, though not exactly converge to 3, but at least start converging to 3, right? So this is, uh, this is how it works. In terms of how quickly it converges, maybe after 200 iteration, it sort of starts showing convergence. I mean, they, it pretty much looks like it has converged beyond this point, even though it hasn't converged to exactly to 3, it has converged close to 3, right? So can we make it faster? It turns out, let's, let's try and see if we can make it faster. So we run it for, with a larger learning rate and let's see what happens. Now you see that even though the convergence is fast, the values that they have, I mean, there is no consensus going on, right? 
And this is one of the problem with this, this decentralized gradient descent algorithm or distributed gradient descent algorithm. So the convergence is not exact. And that is why that is because the two dynamics, one of them is the consensus dynamics and then followed by the gradient dynamics. So the two dynamics kind of sort of uh, I mean so in, interfere with each other. So if you if you look if you try and uh, look at the fixed point of this. So let me switch to here. So if you look at the fixed point of this algorithm. So when does this become zero? Like if I look at the sing, single step of this. So when this quantity is equal to this quantity and that's right. So what this says is that essentially if, if you do if you, have, if you have a finite step size that means individually every gradient has to be zero and that is the problem right at x equal to 3 x star equal to 3 individually not all gradients are zero only one of the gradients of one of the objective function is zero. So that means you do not want this dynamics to happen faster like I mean you do not want xi to be like consensus to happen faster otherwise this dynamics otherwise this term would ensure that in like I mean they individually every gradient is and that is why you see if, if you run the consensus step far, if you use a very large learning rate you see that everyone has more or less converged I mean they are trying to converge closer to their uh, op private objective like the private optimal value right not exactly but closer to their pri uh, private optimal value and so this is the sort of interplay between uh, the consensus step and the gradient step in the uh, DGD algorithm. And let us try and see if the other algorithm, the second order algorithm is any better in that sense. If there is no consensus here. So a suitable learning rate, let us say, let me decrease the learning rate even further, right. Now you can see the values are pretty close to each other but it now takes time to converge right. So increase the number of iterations as well. So now you see that everyone has close to 3. So that means the gradient step is not fast enough so consensus step is uh, there is consensus as well going on between the agents. But again uh, you I mean so this is this is one particular issue with that. So now if I let us say want to use a larger learning rate. And this is where you see this particular issue right. So if I want to use a larger learning rate, one thing that we said was we probably need to use some kind of uh, n plus 1 or some, some kind of decaying learning rate right. So let me run this. So now you can see that for the same learning rate the values are like I mean it takes roughly similar amount of time to run basically to settle down but the values are closer to 3 ok. So if I decrease the learning rate let us say even further. I mean it has not converged but you can see the values are pretty close to each other right. So this is this is one way to sort of uh, get rid of the difference. So in, in uh, Python if you want to do matrix vector product W star x does element wise product. So you, if you want to do matrix vector uh, matrix vector product you have to use that. So either you use that or there is a command called np dot mat mul and yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this does the matrix vector, the usual matrix vector product that you want. Otherwise, it does the element wise product. So essentially, it would be dot product with every column of the uh, every column of the matrix. So so yeah, one thing that we saw was that you may have to use a variable learning rate or basically decaying learning rate if you want the convergence to be more exact, right? Uh, so this is, so let us let us rerun this, uh, define the graph. So with a small learning, with a constant but small learning rate, uh, you essentially get convergence uh, decent, like good enough convergence right. Now let us see how is the second order uh, algorithm looks like which is, uh, so in second order al algorithm 
the agent is going to be exchanging both x as well as y, right? And let's say the agent initializes at some x naught. So this is your x naught. Then your y is essentially y naught is nothing but the gradient of f i evaluated at x naught, right? That's and that is what we are doing. And then we are also going to be keeping track of the y variable because agents also run consensus on y or the mixing on y. So in this case, let's say I use a learning rate of uh, 0 0.01. So this is the algorithm, right? You get a uh, new x, which is w times x, your mixing matrix, mixing step, and your gradient descent, gradient descent step combined. And then your new y is basically mixing on y. Then you basically look at the current grade, like gradient evaluated at a new point minus minus the gradient evaluated at the previous point. Okay, so that's that's what we are doing. And then we are just sort of uh, keeping track of then x and y values. So let's run this algorithm and let's see how the uh, convergence looks like. And you can see it's it's super fast, right? For the same learning rate, uh, it converges much faster. Moreover, like you can see, like you can see that the the difference between the two terms is essentially the difference between the x size. So that there is also consensus on this. And that's because we are running, we are running additional consensus on the uh, on the y variable as well. So if you look, if you analyze the dynamics of this, I mean, there is no sort of interplay between whether you want to do the gradient descent first or the consensus first, right? So for different learning rates, even let's say 0.1, this works. Okay, even for 0.1 kind of learning rate, it works much faster. So that means decrease the number of iterations otherwise. Okay, so this is how this is how this algorithm works. So there's very sort of tight sort of consensus between the uh, I mean between the different optimizers or different estimates of the optimizers as well as they converged faster than the previous algorithm, right? So it's much more robust. The downside is if x is very large dimensional, then you are exchanging two times of that, like basically twice the amount of information, right? So you need, I mean, so there is some, some sort of, uh, in terms of the communication requirement, the communication bandwidth requirement is just double of the previous case, but then you get this uh, faster convergence and more robust convergence, okay?